What are you, are you traveling with uh, Mr. Ankele to, to Washington? No, I'm not. I'm going back to Flacco Parish because we have Reverend Justin Jackson coming in on Thursday. What do you expect? You see, sometimes the folk at the top don't do the right thing because the people they trust and they hire to go in and, and do the work uh, don't always translate the right information to them. Um, certainly, he's going to be in Washington. He'll, let, he'll, have, he'll have an opportunity to state the case himself again. Um, are you optimistic? Are you cautiously optimistic? Are you pessimistic? I'm very pessimistic mystic of this thing. I, I, I'm excited about we have crusaders like uh, Representative Maxine Water and Representative uh, Sheila Lee Jackson you know, fighting our cause. But Katrina has left this pessimism, in, you know, because we've seen the government levels down. I, I'm pessimistic because of the fact that when I see um, Senator Mary Landry um, put more emphasis on businesses getting a million dollar claim and then saying, oh, I'm glad to hear that you're giving the little fisherman $5,000. It will make you wonder when you see some of the um, who are getting a lot of money um, from the petroleum industry, being, being one of our representatives, it needs some best permission. But I'm hopeful that the fact that I know through organizing, community organizing, keep putting pressure from Reverend Justin Jackson and other people coming down, putting this up front, that's something to happen, but it, it's just a question of when. You know, I see a little gray in the beard and a little gray in the hair. And, uh, and I, I say that because uh, perhaps you remember there was a time in our history when people didn't do the right thing and they came into our communities, we just shut them down and say, okay, you know, there's just not going to be any more business, there's not going to be any more anything until you do the right thing. Are you all, or do you have people in the community who are that committed to go to the wall? Well, we're committed. We understand that even the history of history is what we're about. the angel of it. In 1979, the Louisiana legislature passed a law outlawing the hand drag. When Mr. Inkelay and other fishermen got together in 1979, they went to the state legislature and got that amended. So they used to organize it. I mean, so we have a history in our community of being self-determined, self-determined and organized. And we know that we have to continue to do that. We need to put a long haul. We're not going to give up. We organize after Katrina. We open up our community without any government help. And we're going to continue to do that. We're not giving up this fight. Talk, talk to us about the health impact. We've heard about uh, oil, um, fish being contaminated, what the long-term impacts of this oil spill are. Uh, has there been immediate health hazard? Yeah, we've already had fishermen to outworking um, with BP. Um, with all kinds of symptoms of headache, nausea, throwing up, vomiting, rashes on the skin. And so we're saying that this has to be addressed. We know for a fact that BP don't want to work the way of respirators, right? And we're saying that's very important. We've had um, Dr. William Lucino, who is an environmentalist, who, who provided um, face mask respirator, and BP did not like them to use. And we're concerned because just last week, I scratched my skin, and my wife is a registered nurse. She told me, honey, you must have had something under your nail, dirt under your nail to do that. Now, that happened to me, and I'm out, out in the water. Imagine the work that's going out there without the proper protection, having illness, coming home, sleeping with their wives and children. We are really concerned. That's why we're organizing with our nurses, EMT people, the Center for Disease Control to do help assessment on our community to look at the health since April 21st. Because we're concerned that our children out for summer school out in here shouldn't be out in here all day long and washing their hands every day. And in the rural community, we live out, we leave our shoes outside the door. Can we continue doing those things? We got animals that go to the Mississippi River coming back and forth to the holiday. We're concerned that we can have academic in our community and this part is not being addressed. I was in Mississippi a couple of weeks ago and there were some people who had left to go and work. Uh, I forgot how much they were being paid. Uh, it was like $13 or something an hour. Now there is uh, some applications on the internet offering people $19.50 to $21 an hour to come down to work to help clean up the spill. Are you aware of that? Well, first of all, BP uh, is good at public relations. Um, making people pretend that they're hiring a whole bunch of workers. 
BP is flying in um, our Mexican brothers and sisters, putting them in a very secluded area where people can't see them, bring them out of the world. We have local people from day one that will fill out applications, been on call for BP every day. We got local people, we have the vessels to get in the program and BP every home. But they're doing a the public relations. I mean, I have to spend $50 million on public relations, you can put anything you want on it, but we're just saying in our community, um, our people not being employed by BP, the local people in our community have not been employed by BP. Really? Right, and so it sounds good to say you got a best opportunity program, but if you're not hiring any local people, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you're talking about cleaning up, we got people in our community who are unemployed. Most of the fish want much good before the work. Well, then you're waiting on this kind of check that BP is giving you. And they are being overlooked. Oh, totally overlooked. I mean, it would be great public relations to put the local folk to work, to, you know, to say we're committed, you know, we've got a major catastrophe here, it's our fault, but we want to do all that we can to make this community whole again. So for the time, for the time being, we want to hire as many people as we can. Since we've got these slides open, we're going to pay this money. We want to strengthen the community. And that's, you say that's not happening. It, it's not happening. BP is one of the, I mean, they've been total deception from day one. We have been telling the government, we have met with every federal agency you can think of. We have met with the Environmental Protection Agency. We met with the Department of Commerce. So trying to administrate a big environment quality, and everyone in those agencies is mirroring the same thing the BP is saying. And we're saying that, that there must be some government oversight into the problem. To let BP continue to be in control of this process is like putting Dracula over a blood bank and spec some blood. That's major. The serious. It, it, it is that serious. And we're saying that BP should be in a check cashing seat and not the driver's seat. BP should be in the check cashing cash seat and not the driver's right, seat. Right, right check. That's all it should be doing, not controlling the process. Now, I want to ask you about this, and, and this is one of the reasons um, uh, my intern got so excited when she met all of you all yesterday uh, about the boys. Tell us about the young people you're working with. Yeah. And I understand you're bringing them to Detroit. Yeah, we have several young people coming to Detroit for the uh, U.S. Social Forum. We work with the young people. We're teaching young people about coastal restoration. We have a technology center where we're teaching kids uh, how to use computers, how to use video, how kids make movies and make films. They do community service work in the community, the involvement community development process, uh, project. Our kids came together and developed a, a community park that have been dominant for over 40 years. They came in with size and sling blade and now they have a park with playground equipment, football field and, and walking track. So these young people are doing some great work and they're coming to Detroit. Um, matter of fact, they'll be there on Sunday night. And so we expect them to be on your radio program on Wednesday. We think it's really exciting. Well, they will be on Inside Detroit. Now, uh, uh, before we wrap this up, you uh, said that uh, when uh, Byron Ankele travels to Washington uh, tomorrow, that they're going to be some hip hop. But well, joining, they, yeah, they're going with the hip hop caucus. Is, is really sort of sponsoring this event, and they're bringing in people from the golf course to go and visit all the senators and representatives. And besides, the, going to Washington to see the hip hop caucus actually going to be coming to Black and Proud to work with our volunteers <coughs> also. The Hip Hop Caucus, that's awesome. That is really, really awesome. Well, thank you so much. Let me commend you on the work that you're doing. You've been doing this for a while. Uh, definitely committed to it. And I just want to commend you for that. And we'll see you when you get to Detroit uh, next week. And certainly we'll have some of your, some of your young people uh, on, on the show. Now, you have a young man here with you. Tell me who he is. Uh, we have Teller I mean, he's a very excited uh, young man, uh, he keep Byron and I together. He has his own public relation on uh, forum and he really, uh, we're excited Byron and I to pick up on him for most of the stuff we're doing. He's a great researcher and he's committed uh, to his community. Okay, well, uh, thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Mr. Medina, will you come over so that we thank can you. talk with you? Thank you uh, for joining us. And we'll see you in the Motor City, okay? Yes. 64 degrees.